Hello, hello, and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, and I'm very happy to be spending some time with you today. It is Sunday, and it is raining all day long. And I feel so happy about that, because for the last couple of weeks, we were really suffering from the drought here and... Yeah, struggling with not enough water for the plants and animals and now it's just raining and everything is good again. Today I want to talk about a phone call that I had today with one of my warriors. He will be on the show here soon and I'm just very excited to be able to share his story. It was the first phone call that we had. And um, yeah, he was part of a school shooting in the 90s and explained how after years and years, maybe 10 years after the incidents, he started slowly but surely changing he felt triggered more and more and it was like a big black wave that was trying to catch up with him and he says Aurora I didn't have hands anymore I had fists and the way he said that touched me so deeply I can deeply relate to these very dark feelings of anger, anxiety. So I want to talk about these feelings today and how we can deal with them at times. Or if you have a loved one in your family and you feel they're dealing with exactly that and you don't know how to behave. Please know that I'm not a psychotherapist, a psychologist, a counselor. I'm just a girl who went through some stuff. And when COVID started, I just couldn't see myself not doing anything, contributing anything, sharing the tools that have helped me in the past and just help other people sharing their stories. So just know that as a disclaimer. Sometimes we go through stuff and just think, no, that's pretty bad, that's pretty intense shit, but I'll get over it. And then you move on with life and slowly but surely you start engaging in behaviors that help you cope with that stress that you initially went through. And those behaviors can look like like extreme workouts, extreme eating, um, like too much eating or very controlled eating that leads to eating disorders or obesity or anorexia. Drugs like alcohol, weed, cocaine, crack all that jazz and on an emotional level not everybody but most of us are starting to feel less and less empathy we're starting to feel less in general we're not feeling sad anymore we're not feeling anger anymore we're just a shell of a person all of a sudden and the tricky part is the mean part is that it happens gradually it doesn't happen like for some people from one event to the other like one day to the other it happens gradually that you don't feel like really socializing anymore or that you use socializing to overcompensate and everybody's Story is different. Everybody's compensation mechanisms are different. 
And today I want to talk about that extreme anger and sadness that we can feel at times. Desperation, powerlessness. And wanting to distract us from that with very strong substances or very, very strong like ways. It can even be people, you know, people who jump from one relationship to the other or people who can only relate through sex to other people. It can really take all shapes and forms. And we numb, we numb ourselves because we don't want to feel these feelings. We want to run away from them. And we have a hard time to relate to other people because we ourselves are disconnected from our emotions. And it is so very tough when people reach out to you and want to help you because there's something inside of you that cries for that positive attention and the help. But the big shell, like a huge, thick glass that is molded around you prevents you from accepting the help that is being provided. And sometimes it even makes you push away people that you want to have closest, that really could help you. It is such a tough situation to be in. I know it all too well. And with this episode, I just want to share with you that you're not alone in this. And if you recognize yourself now, then don't feel bad. Don't feel regret. You're just doing your best to cope. And if you're dealing with a person who keeps rejecting you, you know, not a person that you're done with them, they're done with you, and you should move on, but a person that really looks like they need your help and they keep being nasty with you, they keep pushing you away. And you can sense that something inside of them cries out for you and wants help. But the face, the body language, everything about them tells you to fuck off. A very important thing that I've learned there as an outsider, outs like person from an outside perspective, and how to behave is to giving that person space and at the same time letting them know that you're still there whenever they need you. So it's not a goodbye, I'm going to avoid you and get better and then we can talk again. It's a, hey, I'm still here, but I'm going to let you come towards me. If you start feeling you need support, if you start feeling like opening up, then I'm here. And it is very, very important for these people to not get into an abusive circle where they allow that person who's sitting in pain to treat them in a shitty way for all too long. Because what you're basically doing is enabling them to stay in that very destructive shitty place if you can relate to this because you've been through it or maybe you're going through it then please know that there's people out there that can make you feel incredibly safe there's people out there who can show you baby steps on how to get better and there's always hope There's always opportunities. Sometimes life looks so dark and hopeless. And it's part of the human experience, I think. Most people I know had to go through that phase in order to truly find out who they are. Some people say, look at a potato. You plant them in the soil and they have to kind of dig themselves out with roots and leaves and everything and they have to fight through the 
process of germination. And they struggle in the dirt, but one day soon they will see the light and then they can blossom. And another image I love to use is that there is trees out there, some pine cones that have to go through fire in order to germinate, in order to truly know who is on their side, who is there for them, and what do they really want in life. Sometimes when we are in a dark, hopeless space, we think there's no way out, but it is actually necessary to go through that phase in order to afterwards deeply appreciate every step you're going to make. You might become more mindful of your steps. You might become more intuitive and sensitive with other people and find out who's good for you and who's not so good for you. Maybe you were running around before that crisis and just soaking up everything that was out there regardless if it's good for you or not. And it just accumulated inside of your chest. And then the darkness came because too much darkness was swallowed and consumed. And you have to shed it again. You have to let go of everything that doesn't serve you anymore. Declutter. Throw stuff out that doesn't give you joy throw stuff out that gives you weird feelings of nostalgia and not good feelings and that are just catching dust and taking up space that you could be using for different things. Know that the dark phase will be over and know that there's light coming. Lightness and joy, deep appreciation, blessings. Those phases really show us who's sticking to us and who's maybe busy with other things. And it is not to judge people, but to see a little bit their true character and what they're made of. And especially to see your character and what you're made of. It is okay to feel weak and powerless. It is okay to feel lost and confused. But it is not okay to not search for tools that could help you to get out of that dark hole a little faster. You can open up to people. You can come onto my show here anonymously and share your stuff and know that it will serve so many people who are feeling the same or even worse, feel more lonely than you. You can read books on how to improve and be okay with those dark feelings. You can go see a counselor. You can declutter. You can start exercising. You can start eating foods that deeply nourish you and drink fresh water. Reduce your sugar and flour intake, which reduces inflammation in your body, which in turn affects your mind and your thinking. There's so many things that I've learned that you can do in order to feel better. And if you're stuck, if you don't know where to go, please reach out. Because I know tons of people next to me, in front of me, behind me, that can help you. Thank you so much for listening to this more dark of an episode. Darkness is part of our life. There's no darkness, there's no real light. And some people claim to say that there is no darkness, there's just light, different shades of light. And I really like that concept too. There's very bright light and there's very dark light. 
If you liked this episode, please make sure to connect on Facebook with me and share your thoughts. I always post videos, very engaging and most of the time fun videos on Facebook. So I'd love you to check them out because they might make you feel really good. And if you want to leave me a review on Apple Podcast, it would mean the world to me. This is how more people can find my podcast and how you can leave me a wonderful feedback. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being here. I will be back out there very soon. Bye-bye. Aurora.